This week on Q Points, we are celebrating the Banji Boombox Festival. Banji Boombox is a fiscally sponsored, vibrant QT BIPOC festival dedicated to the celebration, amplification, and cultivation of safe spaces for the diverse voices of women, non-binary individuals, and LGBTQIA artists, DJs, and musicians. Their mission is to create an inclusive platform that not only showcases the incredible talent within the community, but also fosters an environment where every unique voice can be heard and appreciated. On this episode, we welcome festival performer Nitty Scott. Q Points Podcast family, I don't think you're ready for this one. Please, please hold on to your to your devices. Get comfortable in front of your, your television that you're beaming us onto. Because right now, in this moment, yes. we are celebrating the, the event of the year, the Banji Boombox, mm-hmm. going down on August 3rd on top of the Sultan Bull building mm-hmm. in Brooklyn, New York. This is a homecoming, not just for me, but... One of the illest MCs to ever come out of the game is going to be gracing the stage. I'm talking about none other than Nitty Scott, the MC. Nitty Scott, please welcome welcome to the Pew Points podcast and welcome to our family. How are you feeling today? Hello, I'm feeling good. Easy like Sunday morning, as they say. Very excited to be here. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, I, look, the only way I want to get this started is I'm going to hit you with one of your own bars. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this, okay? <laughs> Let's set it off. I'm not a rapper. I'm an activist who rhymes. Nitty, please, what does activism look like in hip-hop today? And talk to us about what kind of courage does it take to be an activist? Oh, man. You know, I meditate on this almost every day um, Mm -hmm. because for me, my activism, um, sometimes it feels like it it causes me to be at odds with the world, you know, of the majority of the time um, or to feel like, to feel like it's hard to just enjoy things um, when you have a very strong sense and a very and an urgency about what is happening to our communities um, at large, and so yeah, so for me, you know, my activism, for one, I I have to say it's not it's not performative. Um, it is embedded in my art. Um, and that is very natural. And it's also, but it's also reflected within my daily life and, and lifestyle. And I guess what I mean to say about that is that it's very easy to attach yourself to a cause or become a voice for something. Um, but it's, it's, not just understanding those things in theory, but applying them in practice. Mm. And I, you know, I witness a lot of that in our, in the game, you know, where there's a lot of throwing your fist up, saying the slogan, you know, doing the thing. And, you know, I've seen people do quotes like, you know, the black woman is the, the most disrespected yeah. person in America. Meanwhile, there's a black woman in your life right now being utterly disrespected, et Talk cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's about living that out in my daily reality and not just um, in the art. And yeah. <laughs> Woo! You just <laughs> dropped so many bars in the response to your bars right <laughs> um and that's we see it play out and it's been true for you in your career so if folks if you do your research on nitty scott you will see this this activism pop up throughout your career right so it's not just trend setting in hip hop 
the as a musical artist, but also taking hip hop into these other places, right? Academic spaces, other spaces, right? And being able to represent there, right? Yes. So yes. me and Sir Daniel were talking. We were having a really long conversation before as we were uh, transitioning into our conversation. And we were talking about um, how different hip hop as a... Um, as a, 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 a commercial culture is how different it is in 2024, right? Yeah. Um, and in one of those ways that it's very different is the visibility and um, money-making ability of women in the game, right? It's a different level of what's happening. So women are, are lucrative in, you know, corporate, you know, the, the industry sees us as lucrative. Yes. So... Nitty, can you reflect, especially as a person who has been living this for, you know, as long as you have, right? Reflect on 2024, where hip hop as a culture is today, in particular, um, the reflection or the representation of women and femmes in the game. Like, what are some of your yeah. thoughts, feelings? So, yeah. So this is a very layered conversation mm -hmm. for me. And I think this is a wonderful space to have it because I think, you know, the ability to hold space for many things being true at once um, exists yes. here, yeah. right? And so we can, like, we can go there, we can hold space for all that. And usually, you know, you can't, you know, you try to say it in 140 characters and, you know, it just, things become very black and white and whatever. So I say that to say that, as someone who has been like actively in the game since about 2011, I have watched, I have watched this evolution sort of happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, in my experience, if you were a female rapper um, in the era 2011 through maybe 2014, mm -hmm. around there, I really feel like it was difficult to get out of the shadow that was Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, I just, you know, they, she definitely had all of the representation, if you will. And I just felt like everything was always about your even your proximity to her. Um, mm -hmm. It was like she became the default sort of standard for mm -hmm. what a female rapper is and should be and should aspire to be, et cetera. Um, even, there was even a New York Times article that I was flattered to be a part of, but I remember the quote was like, uh, everything that Nicki Minaj worked so hard to build up nitty scott enters and just tears down wow um, wow yeah yeah something like that and you know i, <laughs> I might have the quote verbatim but that was absolutely the sentiment and even though i was appreciating being covered and recognized i really hated that this specific writer you know however they chose to um I mean, okay, well, let me also also say that the article was about Nicki Minaj's influence. So mm -hmm. it, it was about her influence. So I, I will, I, I understand the angle. However, <laughs> I wasn't being, it was almost like my identity in itself couldn't be defined without yeah. saying, well, this is where she is in comparison to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, what's that about? <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. So I just say that to say that I did endure a lot of, um, and there was also a lot of just outright misogyny. I mean, things that occurred on blogs, in comments, on social media, that not to say that, you know, it doesn't occur now, but things that would get you ate up, would get you canceled, would get you, you know, think pieces, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Um, I, re I, I even remember a, a specific blog, a popular blog, publishing a article once that was like, the headline was, 
Nitty Scott, do you prefer to listen to her music or look at her picture? No. And it was just like, they were very serious and they were like, pick one. And everyone was just engaging and, you know, just a lot of, a lot of insane behavior. And I just, I used to get a lot of, a lot of rejection, a lot of just like flat out, this is a boys club. Why are you here? We don't want to hear what you have to say. Um, and even, even a sense of some people not believing that I am as talented as, you know, I present myself to be, or, you know, as they're saying kind of thing. I mean, I'm not going to hold you. I think about the ringer that I was put through the minute people started whispering that she can rap. Mm -hmm. It felt like every radio station, you know, that I went to, it was like, prove it. Go, go. People questioning my pen, people questioning if I write my own lyrics, people questioning yep. if I'm really as nice as they say I am. And I just say that to say that if you think about some of the leading names in that space right now, there are some that come to mind that I think can and have held their own. But as far as that, that level of intensity, that level of rigorousness, that level of I'm going to make you come up here and I'm going to throw on a beat and we're going to expect you to wrap your ass off. Mm. I don't doesn't happen anymore. Demanded. I don't see that being demanded. It's not right. Of the, the women that right. we're kind of considering the best female rappers. That's, okay? I'm just, that's you know what I'm wild saying? that you so said I that. I a lot of hoops to even like I, to, to earn Yes. my right to like call myself somebody who does this right mm -hmm. and and i feel like there's a lot of erasure mm. of the women that endured that and that continue to give you quality work despite the fact that we don't have that same visibility now i will say that i you know am have always been um deliberately indie and you know, so that does speak to, I think, why my journey was always going to be different. Mm -hmm. Just or, um, but yeah. But getting back more specifically into into mm -hmm. what we're talking about, so I think it went from having to fight to even take up space mm -hmm. if your name was not Nicki Minaj to this sort of wave of acceptance and just as a culture just people being curious welcoming you know and and eventually supportive of girls who want to rap yes like this 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 happened gradually over time but this was not something that was the case when i first you know popped out um so yeah i think you know i wouldn't call it the renaissance that I've heard some people call it because I do still feel like there's an archetype. There's a lack yes. of representation. I am, you know, I'm a fan of, of, of all of it. I'm a fan mm -hmm. of all of it. And I think there's space for all of it. Um, but there is a lack of representation when it comes to just different facets yeah. of womanhood um being being represented and yeah so it's been kind of difficult for me to like feel like i'm genuinely happy um to see women getting these opportunities mm -hmm. and being as visible as they are and i think being the more progressive like leaders um like musically yes. in the culture right now you know what i mean like i'm here for it and and i even try to not be um what is it called like these men these dudes have been out here being everything they want to be from you know an ignorant rapper that maybe isn't contributing much or isn't you know 
special in any way, right? So in my in my thing, it's like I try I do feel like there's some misogyny in the way that people try to make every single rap a female rapper appeal to everyone. Mm. As opposed like mm. and and you know, these men are allowed to just occupy whatever space they occupy to, you know, speak to whatever audience that they speak to. And, you know, this is he's this kind of guy and he's this kind of dude and, and they can be whatever they are. But with women, it's like you're too this or you're too that or, you know, they're trying to mold you into everything. And I will say that I think uh, Nikki went through that mm -hmm. while she was like sort of maintaining that spot where. I didn't think it was right for people to be like, well, why can't you be a little more this, a little more that? Well, why don't you pay attention to the other women artists out here that are maybe giving you that and mm -hmm. you can go get you and support that, right? But instead you're demanding someone to, I don't know, appeal to you or, or anyone else. So- Nidhi, can I, I offer- I've said a mouthful, but I, I, I think I think about this a lot. And so that's just kind of where I'm at with it, where there's been a lot of progress. I'm happy to see the girls out here grinding mm -hmm. and eating and and taking up space. Um, yes. But I yeah. also don't think that it's the renaissance that everybody makes it sound like it is. Mm -hmm. um, but can I throw in another yeah. caveat? Let me ask you this. So we just recently discussed this on an, um, on a recent episode. Uh, Little Kim just um celebrated we believe her 50th, 50th. birthday mm -hmm. and oh. we were discussing the that in and of, if it, of itself the ageism aspect yes. because little kim for all intents and purposes is the archetype mm -hmm. and the and the archetype of the goddess the goddess mc that a lot of um the the peers now are imitating Mm -hmm. in their and own respect the goddess gangster, i will say you know because it's not just yes. it's not just baddie raps it's also like and i'm with some niggas who who will shoot you, you know what I'm saying? yes it's gangster, you know? exactly <laughs> but now throwing ageism into that yes. and how you know little kim was already put through the ringer and disrespected in her own right even when she was when she was considered young in the mm -hmm. in the industry, but now throw ageism on top of that. Yes. And what do you have to say to that as well? Because it's not the same. A woman aging in hip hop is not the same as a man aging in hip hop. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna. I'll say that that transcends hip hop. That transcends, you know, our our culture and everything. That's like just in in general in the greater world. Um, you know, women are seen as, it's like, if you're already objectifying us, then of course you're gonna see me as a depreciating asset, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's about, like you see these, yeah, so on the one hand, it's just, you know, flat out misogyny and, you know, but there's also the ageism a, a specific ageism that is prevalent in our culture where I don't think that we embrace what it means to be seasoned. Um, you know, I, I understand that hip hop has always, um, has always been the voice of youth. Mm -hmm. Like I, I get that youth um, is always going to like drive things forward, but it's like you look in, you you can still see, uh, you know, you two and the Rolling Stones and all of that out here touring, old as shit. You know what I mean? Please With diverse that. audiences, so, right? Yeah, it, right. So it's like these artists are being appreciated for their seasoned artistry, and why are we, you know, devaluing our? Uh, you know, forefathers, if you will. Um, you know, why is it that a lot of a lot of the earlier uh, rappers that you know put put shit on the map? You know, there's there's plenty of them that are not doing well, if you will. You know, 
Yes. And, you know, it's stuff like that that I think is is a shame. And I think we do, you know, as a culture, need to um, not, again, it's nothing wrong with what is new and shiny and exciting, and, and that will always be there. But there is there is undeniable value. There are gems in people who have stories to tell, people who have survived, people who have, you know, seeing things change and evolve, there's so much value in that and we cannot throw that away. So, um, yeah, we'll always be an advocate for that. (laughs) Wowza. Um, (laughs) I I do, um, you know what? Let's talk about Banji Boombox because I do want to come back to something, but I think, When you start talking about this idea, Nitty, as well, of, like, creating spaces and having spaces for us to, like, be our full selves. When you think of a space like Banji Boombox and you being able to grace that stage with this audience, why, from your perspective, is it important that spaces like that exist Um, because this is also something that we've needed. I can't imagine for us growing up, what it would have been like to have a space like a Banji Boombox where you could come and be your full self, right? So talk yeah. about that. Why is it important that these spaces exist? Yeah, that would have changed the game, man. So, you know, <laughs> I, for for several reasons. For one, um, community. You know, just we need community. I need community badly. Um, we all do. And it's important to facilitate that um, amongst ourselves and, and also for solidarity mm-hmm. um, amongst, uh, amongst us with, within, you know, what, what we got going on because mm-hmm. we are up against, you know, a, a world that doesn't want us to exist Um, doesn't want us to be happy, healthy, you know, celebratory, any of these things. So it's, you know, it's very important, I think, to be like, just as, just as serious about that, as we are about, like, working and getting to this money and, you know, all, all that good stuff, like being just as enthusiastic about, like, curating community um and 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 villages um because it's a really critical time it's a really critical time to to that as well can you tell us a little bit what should folks expect from nitty scott at this year's performance at banji boombox what you bring in nitty oh so i am (laughs) just bringing like real afro latina girl realness you already know, Bruja vibes all day. Um, and we're gonna take a little trip. We're gonna take a little trip. So I'm gonna give them some some Nitty Scott gems that you know the people who've been rocking with me will definitely be excited about. Um, yeah, we'll take a little trip down memory lane. And um, yeah, and then we're gonna bring it all the way up to the now. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have a lot of fun. I'm gonna have a lot of fun. I mean, I feel like we could we can continue talking forever because there's just so many things in the landscape right now when it's whether it's happening in front of the camera Mm -hmm. or behind the scenes, like just the the culture as a whole is just going through I don't know, it's going through some growing pains. pains. But I would not expect anything less because of the country that we're in. Right. You know, we're we're in this country we are experiencing you know what i never thought i would be experiencing in this moment nitty is this this xenophobia that's popping up within the culture culture. you know this whole this whole argument about who who was here here first first. it's Um, why do do immigrants have a a stake in the game (laughs) and and it's wild to me Yes, I came to this country at two years old, but I have a stake in this in this culture too. It's wild, like how 
what what are you experiencing in yeah. this moment when you feel when these things keep popping up these little thorns these and it's always these grifters it's people that are it's not great. really invested and love this love the culture it's these grifters that are coming to cause dissension so that they can yeah. make a coin right and division mm -hmm. and and profit off of the the chaos and inciting anger right mm -hmm. and like like i think it's all about like triggering mm -hmm. triggering people and and distracting us from the work that needs to be done because i feel like it's kind of like if i keep you divided pissed off frustrated you are not going to have the capacity mm -hmm. the energy even the information right to dismantle anything hmm. so yeah mm. yeah your uh your attention is currency right Ooh. yes yeah. bar so we, right. gotta <laughs> bar. we gotta be stingy with that energy but be stingy mm. yeah nitty scott constantly <laughs> dropping gems both on wax and in interviews. What? Thank you so much for Thank taking you. time out of your day to come here and hang out with us. Nitty Scott is going to be on stage, y'all, at Banji Boombox, August 3rd, at the Sultan Room in the planet of Brooklyn. Q Points is also going to be in the building. Please, please, please come through. Nitty, where can folks keep in touch? Where do you prefer that folks come and get stay in touch with you and connect with you? I would say Twitter and Instagram. Those are my homegirls. Hit me up <laughs> at Nitty Scott MC, N I T T Y S C O T T M C. Um, and if anybody's interested in working, collaborations, bookings, any of that good stuff, Nitty Scott MC Booking at gmail.com. Holla at me. Yes, yes. Pull up on August 3rd, too. It's going to be amazing. Yes, yes, yes. There you have it. <laughs> Key Points Podcast family, Nitty Scott, we thank you so much for joining us. Please join us August 3rd, the Sultan Rooftop Building in Brooklyn, August 3rd. Banji Boombox is about to go down. Again, we thank you, Nitty Scott. DJ Sir Daniel, J. Ray, it's Q Points Podcast, dropping the needle on Black music history. Peace, y'all.